So this video is actually inspired by my other video where I power scale every Jujutsu Kaisen character. And in that video, there are a lot of arguments talking about Yuta and Hakari, actually quite a lot of them in the comments. And that inspired me to make this video here. So the video is going to be split into three parts. The first part is going to be arguments for Yuta. The second is going to be arguments for Hakari. And the final is going to be the conclusion. And it's going to be my conclusion, which obviously I think is true, but you can disagree. That's fine. I think it's impossible for everyone to agree on everything. So it's natural if, let's say, half of you disagree. Though I would hope, you know, the majority would agree with me by the end of it, but we'll see what happens. Now, arguments for Yuta. So I guess a really good point is straight up in chapter 173 in the final page, the author straight up says that Yuta is a special grade sorcerer only second to Satoru Goju in unusual abilities. Now, at first, I thought this was kind of a nothing burger because, okay, unusual abilities, that could mean a whole array of things. It doesn't mean he's the second strongest. But actually, a comment in my other Jujutsu Kaisen video said that the kanji is the word of strength or something along those lines where the actual Japanese text uses the kanji for strength. So assuming that's true, then Yuta is straight up the second strongest to Gojo. So right off the bat, that's a very big case right there. The other point for Yuta is him just being insanely powerful. Now I know this is kind of like a random point to bring up or it may not feel like a point, but what I mean is his strength is truly extraordinary. Once he brings out Rika and of course with his own curse technique, well I guess Rika's a part of that, but another one it's kind of like his copying abilities he is just absolutely nutty i can't lie and that's not even including the fact that of course he has reverse cursed energy mastered and he also has the ability to use reverse cursed energy not only on other people not even gojo can do that that's really crazy but he can also remove poisons which was said in the kashimo versus akari fight in chapter 189 is the complete mastery of reverse cursed energy or at the very least it is an insane level of mastery so he can heal very very well and of course this doesn't even get into his own cursed energy, like the total amount of it is ridiculous, where it's even more than Gojo's. Though of course Gojo has his infinity technique, so he pretty much never loses cursed energy. It doesn't matter that Yuta has more of it, Gojo's never going to run out. Kind of a cheat code, it's Gojo, what can you do? And this is beside the fact that he took on Udo and Ishigori in a 1v1v1. Oh, and also the cockroach cursed spirit. So granted, it wasn't a 2v1, it was more of a free for all, but he came out on top of that as the victor, which is incredible incredible considering Ishigori has the highest cursed output in history, or at the very least, most of history. I mean, it's even fair to argue Ishigori's output is even higher than Gojo's, which is kind of crazy. Actually, it might actually be because when Ishigori was around, it was said to be the highest in history, and this was after Sukuna existed. I mean, obviously Sukuna's still way stronger than him. Well, maybe not way stronger than him, but he is stronger than him, of course. But the fact that he has a higher cursed output shows how crazy it is, and Yuta took him on hand to hand. Yuta is no joke, he is quite a monster. Now I'm going to get into the downsides of Hakari when bumping up Yuta. So the issues with Hakari is it's not that he isn't strong, it's that his abilities rely too much on luck. So as we saw in the Kashimo fight, he would have died had he not got insanely lucky and hit jackpot. I think it was like his third or fourth jackpot. And not only that, just hitting jackpot in the first place. I know there are many factors explaining why he has a higher chance. It's not one out of 219. It's actually way higher than that. And I actually have a full video explaining his domain expansion. So if you want more in-depth explanation on that you can check that out but it's the fact that it's so luck based is a very big issue it's not like he can just bring out his powers whenever he wants he needs to be very lucky to actually take people on and then of course this goes into the fact that he only has his abilities for four minutes 11 seconds granted if he's lucky he could get like eight minutes 22 seconds if he gets the uneven numbers but like i said it is all luck based which is just not a good look especially in life and death battles now i want to conclude yuta's part of saying yuta is incredibly powerful even across cursed users in history he is amongst the top of the top as we've seen in his fights. Now, before I get into points for Hakari, if you've been enjoying the video so far, do consider subscribing. I cover Jujutsu Kaisen on this channel. I am covering a lot of Jujutsu Kaisen, so if you like the content, please do consider subscribing. Now, let's get into points for Hakari. So, the main point being, let's say Hakari gets very lucky, like in his fight with Kashima, and he's just hitting jackpots over and over again. You can't kill this man. Well, granted, he is killable, because if you just chop his head off or something, or blow it up, or even poison him, he'll die. But as we've seen, he has resistance 
resistance to poisons. Not only that, you can't even destroy his head fast enough for him to die. Even if Yuta were to slice his head off, I guarantee you, at least from what we've seen, he would, as Yuta's blade is slicing through, his head would heal as the sword is going through. I know that sounds crazy, but it's literally what happened when Kashimo tried to blow his head off of lightning. He healed as the head was exploding. He truly seems to be unkillable in this state. And granted, while he only has 4 minutes 11 seconds, the thing is, if Hakari hits uneven numbers, then he has increased probability, which pretty much guarantees he hits another jackpot, which in turn gives him 8 minutes 22 seconds of domain expansion, which gives him 8 minutes 22 seconds of infinite cursed energy where he can't even die. Now, the biggest issue is that Yuta's ability only lasts 5 minutes with Rika. Even if Hakari, let's say, gets really lucky, so not even as lucky as he was in the Kashimo fight, but he hits 3, he's gotten 3 jackpots in total. Even if he just hits 2, he would outlast Yuta. That's crazy. And we've seen Yuta does have a limit. Granted, Rika can give him cursed energy, but after that 5 minutes is up, he's on his own. He has a tremendous amount of output, but it can run dry eventually without Rika. So Hakari getting lucky could just lead to him winning overall. Now, a big argument I see is Yuta could just expand his domain against Hakari's and it would be over because Hakari wouldn't be able to use his abilities. Maybe Yuta wouldn't either, but then Hakari could never hit jackpot. Now, this is where I have a theory. So this is kind of headcanony. You can let me know what you think about this. But because Hakari's domain is very special, I think it would actually still work even in the tug of war. So for example, Fushirugo's domain expansion doesn't have a guaranteed hit technique. In exchange, he basically was able to use more of his abilities to a stronger level. So even when he was in the tug of war with Dagon, he was still able to use his Shikigami. The thing is, if your curse technique doesn't utilize the one hit confirmed technique, I think it really just depends on the domain expansion. So there's three types. We have, we have the guaranteed hit techniques, and then we have loop type domain expansion. So this is the one Hakari has. I think someone else has a domain like this. I don't exactly remember who. And then we have the third one, which I don't really know how to explain it. Obviously, because I'm going off the top of my head, it's more like Higuruma's domain expansion, where he doesn't have a guaranteed hit, but he also doesn't have the loop. It's something else entirely, where you have to play by the rules of the domain. Now, because Hakari's isn't the guaranteed hit, his loop might still work even in the domain expansion tug of war. Because we saw Megumi's abilities, because they weren't a guaranteed hit type, they still worked even in tug of war. But it does seem like since Kashimo tried to activate Hollow Whisker Basket, I think that's how you say it, basically the old version of a simple domain, because Hakari's isn't a guaranteed hit, it will still work even through that domain. So even if you use a simple domain and had your own domain, his gambling jackpot technique, his domain expansion's rules still work. That's why Kashimo gave up on the simple domain or the Hollow Whisker ba Basket, whatever it was called back in the day. So that's why it's very likely. Again, tell me what your thoughts on this. I could be wrong, but I actually think it's extremely likely that even in a domain expansion tug of war, Hakari's ability will not only still work, but if Yuta has the guaranteed hit type domain expansion, which he probably does because he's so strong, Yuta's domain expansion would be useless, while Hakari still has his domain expansion activated. And I guess another, this is a very obvious point, but Hakari is insanely, insanely powerful in this state. He is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kashima, one of the strongest sorcerers in history, in terms of one-on-one -on -one combat, you know, a brawler type. And obviously, Hakari does not have infinite curse energy output or he would just one punch everyone like Saitama but his output is still insanely high and that's with the fact that he has an infinite amount of cursed energy and not only that his reverse cursed energy in that state so while it's being used subconsciously is insanely powerful it's being used on masterful levels because it can even take out poison and it can even regenerate him while his head is exploding so it is incredibly powerful so even though Yuta is strong if he can just get lucky and outlast Yuta's five minutes and let's say he gets hits his jackpot once fair enough gets increased probability, hits his jackpot again, he would outlast Yuta. So that's points for Hakari. And the final point for Hakari is, even though this has not been seen yet, because I am recording this as of chapter 189, it was said that he has a rainbow jackpot if he hits jackpot on his fourth time. It can be like a rainbow jackpot. Obviously that hasn't happened yet. I think it's going to happen because, well, the author added it for a reason and he's about to run out of his third domain expansion against Kashimo. So he also has that. We're going to see soon. So what is the conclusion? The point is, it really, really depends on Hakari's own luck. The story has said many times, well, beside the one time, it literally states that Yuta is the second strongest to Gojo, but it also implies that he's also kind of like the next up from Gojo. And now the real final point for Hakari is the fact that Yuta himself said that when Hakari's on a roll, 
he's even stronger than me, which, with every evidence I just gave you, makes sense why he would say that. If Hakari is getting lucky like he is in the Kashimo fight, he would kill Yuta. Granted, Yuta could just be being modest, because Yuta's a very, very nice guy. You could make that argument too, but it doesn't seem like he was being modest. From everything we've seen, it seems like he was speaking the truth. Now, the conclusion. Yuta, as it was said in the story, and is also implied in the story, is second only to Gojo. He is the strongest sorcerer in the current age, not including Gojo, by far. But we have unique characters like Hakari, where if he's lucky, he's stronger than Yuta. This is the big issue with Hakari. Either if he is unlucky, he's probably as strong as a grade 1 sorcerer, and Yuta would kill him if he just takes too long to hit his first jackpot. However, if he gets lucky, hits a jackpot very quickly, which we've seen can happen in one roll that has happened in the Kashimo fight, so it can happen. And he then also proceeds to get an uneven number, which leads to increased probability, which leads to him hitting a domain expansion again, which would outlast Yuta, and even if Yuta were to survive the extra three minutes where he doesn't have Rika, it is shown that he can hit jackpot a third time, and it's also shown with his abilities of the rainbow jackpot that he can hit a fourth jackpot if he gets lucky. So the conclusion is that Yuta is overall stronger than Hakari. However, if Hakari gets lucky, he would kill Yuta in a fight. So who's stronger? It's very tricky because Hakari is someone who's very luck based. He is not consistent. Overall, I would just put Yuta over Hakari for that consistency. However, if Hakari's lucky, he's even stronger than Yuta. He is a monster, but like I've said many times, it's that consistency that's the issue. If he could consistently be in that infinite cursed energy state, or if he didn't require all this gambling to hit it, then he would obviously be the strongest. But the issue is he has just this insane requirement. Granted, if he's lucky, it's all good. But if he's unlucky, he's dead. Which is funny. I guess Hakari is as strong as the author wants him to be. Because let's say Hakari's fighting someone super powerful, like one of the strongest cursed users in history, Kashimo. Okay, just have him be lucky and keep hitting jackpots. But let's say he's fighting someone else and the author doesn't want Hakari to be strong or to win. He could just be like, oh, he got unlucky. So kind of a cheat code character, I guess. And that is it for the video. Like I said early in the video, if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing because I cover Jujutsu Kaisen on this channel and I'm going to be covering a lot more soon. And also if you liked the video, leave a like too because it helps out the channel. Or if you're salty and you didn't, hey, leave a dislike. Engagement helps too, so thanks. But just a reminder that it's okay if you do not agree with me. It's impossible to agree with everyone and everything. If I'm lucky, like 70 to 80% of people will agree with me. If you're part of the 20, 30% that disagrees, that's all good. All I ask is for you to just not get upset and triggered in the comments. But if you have actual criticisms and you actually have good points as to why you might disagree with me, I'm all open to that. Just keep it civil. But yeah, I mean, it was a pretty interesting topic to make, to be honest, because it's one of those things that's really debated about a lot because there's so much evidence for both characters.